Hi, this is Bob. Hey, Bob, this is Brandon with XYZ Real Estate. How are you doing today? Now, listen, there is a better way to open up a sales call. And before I do that, let's first break down exactly why this call opener isn't as effective as it can be. Now, listen, to be fair, this is how I opened my sales call for a long time. You might even have an old script book of mine that has that call opener with the whole, how are you doing today? And here's the thing. When I changed to this new call opener that I'm going to teach you, I went from having a 27% success rate, meaning 27% of the time I was able to have a good conversation with the prospect when I called them. Now it's all the way up to 88% of the time we can have a good conversation. And my coaching clients are telling me the exact same thing. So let's start with part one. These are the mistakes we want to avoid when making a sales call. Number one, being overly enthusiastic with your tonality and voice inflection. Why? Well, because when you start off a sales call with that high-pitched tonality and that inflection in your voice, only telemarketers, only salespeople communicate that way. And therefore is a dead giveaway that this is in fact a sales call. And when we receive sales calls, what do we do? We say, oh, why did I answer this call? And the prospects are doing the same thing to you and they automatically get on the defensive. Number two, this opener fails to break the pattern. So when you fail to break a pattern, what you're going to do and what you're gonna find and what you probably already know is true to be fair is that you're gonna to start to elicit what we call conditioned responses. Let me give you a couple of examples to make sure that this makes sense. So all of us have experienced this at some point in time, but you walk into a department store, right? This is probably the easiest example. And you walk in and the person behind the cash register says what? Can I help you find anything today? And what do you say every single time? Without fail, you say what? You say, no, I'm good. I'm just looking. That is a conditioned response. How do we know it's a conditioned response? Well, because just two minutes later, you go to that same person who you told just two minutes ago you were just looking and you buy something almost every time. Because let's face it, you know, you probably have a little bit more going on in your world that would prohibit you from just being bored and driving around to department store to department store because you're bored. No, I don't think so. I think that you went to that department store on purpose to purchase something. But when that person asked you that question, it elicited that conditioned response. Nope, I'm good. I'm just looking. Well, here's a better example. This is one of my favorite examples that I talk to my coaching clients about all the time. So here in Michigan, and I don't know if you have these in your malls, wherever it is that you live, but this is so good. All right. So in Michigan, we've got these kiosks in the middle of the mall. So as you walk down the mall, there's all these like little uh, mini kiosks. And all these people will approach you with whatever it is that they're selling, hair products or shoe cleaner or whatever the case may be. And here's the key secret. As soon as they start walking towards you, what most people, they don't even have to say a word. They're like, nope, 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 I'm good. I'm not interested, I'm good. And so what you wanna do is you don't even wanna make eye contact with these people because you know, as soon as they make eye contact with you, they're all over you. And so they too elicit that conditioned response. No, I'm good, I'm not interested, and you just keep walking. So the call needs a pattern interrupt, which we are gonna get into great detail in just a second, but let me just give you an example just to make sure you're tracking. So let's just pretend that you worked at one of these department stores or you worked at a kiosk. Instead of saying to somebody, hey, can I help you find anything? What if you said this? Hey, I'm sure you're just looking, so I won't even ask. But should you need help, I'd be happy to do so. Fair enough? Now, when you do that, we break the pattern because it's not what the person is used to hearing. So the third mistake when we use this call sales opener is this elicits psychological reactance. Simply put, social psychologists have defined reactance like this. It happens when we put somebody in a position where they feel as though their freedom to make their own decision, their own choice is at threat. And when somebody feels as such, what do they do? 
They retract, they push back, they rebel. They wanna do the exact opposite. It's like telling the kid, hey, don't touch that hot stove. You're gonna burn your hand. What is it that they wanna do even more now? Well, you've actually elicited some curiosity. What would it be like to touch that stove when you told them not to touch the stove? Well, here's the great thing. There is so much research that social psychologists have done with understanding reactants and how to communicate to remove it. So here are some really, really good examples. Social psychologists did a couple studies. One was they, they put a couple of signs up in a, in a national park. On the sign, they said, don't litter. And what do you think happened with the people walking in that park? Well, you guessed it, if you've learned anything, the amount of trash and littering actually increased because the way the sign was written was eliciting, yet again, that reactant. Here's an even better study. I love to share this study. So social psychologists did a study on panhandlers asking for money on a busy corner. And they had two groups of panhandlers. One group had a sign that said, help. That's all the sign said. Now, the other group of people had a sign that said, whether or not you decide to help, your consideration is much appreciated. And what they found in the study as a result, as you could probably guess, is that second group of people had 400% more people give them money than the first group when the sign just said help. Because help suggested that the prospect, or in this case, the people walking on the corner, didn't have a choice. They were just saying, give me money. And what happens when we do that to people and they feel like that freedom is taken away to make their own decision, they resist it. They retract, they do the exact opposite. So I'll give you one more example and then we'll move on. You'd see this all the time on YouTube with these big YouTubers. You'll watch a video and they'll say things like, hey, uh, be sure you subscribe and smash that like button. And what is, what is it that you're saying? Well, if you're like me, it's like, well, no, I, I'm not gonna subscribe. I'm just gonna see if there's any value here, then maybe I will consider it. So what YouTubers might wanna do differently that would cause more people to subscribe to their channel and more people to hit the like button is instead of trying to force the person to a behavior, we wanna communicate like this. We would say, hey, listen, if you find value and you decide to subscribe to the channel, it would be much appreciated. And if not, that is okay too. I just hope you get at least some takeaways from this video and it's not a complete waste of time. Now that person or that YouTuber has put that, the, the viewer rather, in a situation to make their own decision. So let's move on to part number two. What should your sales call opener include to increase your success rate. Number one is a mindset. And the mindset is this. When you open up a sales call, your only goal is to sell a conversation. We're not looking to list the home. We're not looking to, to sell the appointment at the beginning of the call. We call this conversation chunking. You see, you've got to actually get into a good conversation well before, way before, you can even think about setting an appointment, right? It only makes sense. So when we chunk down the conversation, goal number one, when we pick up that phone and the prospect says hello, our only mindset is, okay, I have to, I have to do something here so that I can at least sell a conversation to see if there's interest, to find out if there's motivation, to uncover if there's an appointment here or not. You cannot skip over all of that. So the mindset is, I'm just gonna focus on the opener. And here's what that opener must include. Number one, it has to break the conditional response. How do we do that? We've gotta use a pattern interrupt. I'm gonna show you exactly what that is in just a second. Number two, we have to remove the prospect's psychological reactants. How do we do this? We give the prospect complete freedom to make their own choice whether or not to accept this call. Like I said before, when you do this, 
more people will actually be open to having the conversation, not less. And then number three, your call opener must elicit curiosity. So you need to deliver a hook in such a way that pulls the prospect in closer because they can't help but want to find out what is this call about. So let's get into part three, which is the sales call opening framework. Step one is to use the prospect's first name. So if you're calling a prospect and the prospect's name is Bob and a man answers, you simply want to say, Bob, we're going to use a slight upswing to catch the prospect off guard, just like we did with children in school, right? So when somebody uses your first name as a question, you naturally get curious. Who, who is this? Step two is the pattern interrupt. So here's what you're going to say. Bob, this is Brandon. And, and listen, I'm not even sure if you can help me out or not. Step three is to remove the psychological reactant. So you might say something like this. But I was hoping to really quick ask you a question and then you can tell me if we need to continue. Fair enough? So let me put the whole thing together for you so you can see exactly what it sounds like. Ring, ring, ring. Hi, this is Bob. Bob, listen, this is Brandon, and I'm not even sure if you can help me out or not, but listen, I was hoping to ask you a question really quick, and then you could tell me if we need to continue or not. Fair enough? Now, before you start to judge this, oh, I really like that, or man, I, I don't like that at all, before you make any decision, I would offer you to consider trying it. I've had so many agents that I coach in the beginning push back on this, like, man, that feels very uncomfortable, to which I respond, that's the point. And so when you try it, I promise you, more prospects are gonna be more open to having more conversations, which is exactly what it is that you and I are looking for, right? So just give it a try. Now, when the prospect says, well, sure, uh, what's up? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Now, you're gonna have something that social psychologist Robert Caldini wrote about in his book, Influence, called The Principle of consistency, which simply states, once somebody verbalizes a commitment, the likelihood for them to stay and behave consistent with that commitment increases dramatically. So try this out, you guys. I think, again, you're gonna have great success with it. I know that it could be new. I know that it might even be uncomfortable for you, which is fine. But I think you're here because you want to get better. You want to get better results. You want to serve your clients at a higher level, provide a better life for your family. So listen, there's no downside. There can only be a positive. So give it a shot. Let me know what your thoughts are. Circle back to this video uh, in the comments and give me your feedback. And I think what you're fine is that you have a lot better conversations when you follow the framework for from today's video. So I appreciate your guys' time and attention, and we'll see you guys in another video very soon.